Hello, everybody, and welcome Yo. to episode 36 of Controllers and Coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just lost for words for a sec there. My name is Elliot Porter, and I am joined, as always, by the wonderful Kat Gerritsen. Yo, we are a little bit late because so Kat was just finishing up a game that we are going to talk about. But how are you, Kat? Great to see you, as always. You know, I so good. literally just came from playing video games. What could be better? How are you? That's the dream. I'm great. Thank you. I've, I've been playing so many games. I literally got home from work, smashed out a little bit of Yakuza 0 before, um, mm. before I had to get ready to do this. So, um yeah, I'm loving Amazing. it. Loving loving games. Games are just fantastic, are they not? Oh, they're just so good. How do I get more in my life? Um, that's a great question. And I'm sure our lovely viewers can tell us how they can get more games in their lives. And they can support us um, by listening and watching uh, this podcast. Uh, Shred is here in the comments. Welcome. Shred! It is indeed Flight Sim Day. Uh, 1 a.m. or something for Australians. Ooh, those lives. So we get 1 a.m. Uh, we get kind of ripped off there. Um, we don't get it to the 28th. But i got to clear some hard drive space because that boy is chunky. It's thick. Um, thick it's, with data. It's a big 97 gig download. Um, I can, uh, I think I can spare the space. <laughs> I need one of those external hard Externals, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, Kat, yeah. we've got a lot to cover today. We're going to talk about the freaking just bollocks that's going on at Blizzard. Yeah. Because you kind of got it right um yeah. talk about stop in a minute we're also going to talk about some beautiful new screenshots and gameplay i just found out i went and watched um this this forza horizon 5 stream there's like freaking yeah. gameplay going on and it looks sensational uh we're going to get into all of that but i thought i'd start by uh talking about sea of thieves real quickly if that's okay Go with you it. absolutely i know nothing well, I haven't played this game. Uh, sorry, I'm just sorting out something on my phone. I haven't played this game since launch, and I think it launched, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, 2018? Fuck that. I'm trying to think. Hmm. I think it was 2018. Yes, played it, it at was. launch. It was very, it was pretty bare bones at launch, and it was, it was very pretty and had, it was fun at times, but it was very, you know, it was lacking features and it was lacking mm. depth. And so we put it, you know, put it away, put it back in the Game Pass catalogue. Yeah, just um, pop it off for a side. And it's crazy to think that I've been using Game Pass for like three years, over three years now. Crazy. Because um, I've played it on Game Pass. And yeah, there were, you know, it's had a lot of updates over the years. It's really come a long way and then just never got around to playing it again. But the Pirates of the Caribbean um, oh, DLC yeah. called A Pirate's Life has just been released. Um, and of course, Tash is a big old fan of um, uh, Pirates it's of the good. Caribbean. And yeah, Jack oh, Sparrow. Who's not? And, oh, I know. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, Johnny Depp. So. Although I don't think it's Johnny Depp. I think it's his voice alike, sound alike. Um, so we thought, stuff it, let's get it, let's download it and give it a shot. And, oh, man, it's really fun. Uh, oh, bit of a caveat on the fact that we had just so many annoying server issues yesterday. Oh. Um, we're trying to play it and, like, well, for one thing, <laughs> we loaded up the game and you started like a, a an outpost or, you know, the trading port. Yeah, little thing. safe You can spot. pick up missions. and Yeah, well, safe, you think. Not, there's nowhere is safe on the, on the high seas. Nowhere is safe. And we're just like, you know, getting some supplies and walking around and thinking, what do we do? We get in our little ship and we just immediately get murdered and our ship got sank. And I'm like, I'm not even going to try and repair the ship yeah. because... I'm just going to get destroyed. So 
just we died and we respawn ages away because they kind of spawn you away from the people that killed you, which I think is That's good. Kind. But it'd be nice if there was like a passive area where you could, you know, kind of do all Learn. that stuff without. <laughs> yeah. Because like we played it a bit, but not enough to really remember. Yeah. It's not baked so, in knowledge. Exactly. So that was funny. And then we're like, all right, cool. We'll keep playing the, the missions that we we're doing. And then we just had all these annoying server issues and like the door we tried to get through didn't open. And I was like looking on Reddit and people are having the same issue. And oh, no. it was a bit frustrating. So we're like, all right, we'll just do, we'll just sail around and do shit. Just and then like it. trying to pick up a mission from a quest giver. And it was like, we can't access these, this inventory right now. Please try again later. Cause it has to like access the servers to get the information. Yeah. Oh my God. And then like, Tash was like flying through the air, but she was actually <laughs> swimming. And, uh, yeah. and she was like, she was like, why are you in the water? I was like, I'm not, I'm on the ship. And then my game froze and we were like, oh, let's, let's just fucking get it. <laughs> this is the uh, end for today. <laughs> but I'm like, I desperately want to play it. It's so fun. Uh, but yeah, doing the Pirate's Life DLC, it's actually story content. Uh, it's actually really interesting. You're like fighting bloody sirens and, um, there's like cool undead shit going on and talking little shit. skelly boys. I love um, skelly boys. Same, same. They're so hilarious and also cute. Um, and Jack Sparrow, and he's he's great. So yes, there's this amazing like sequence, and it's like one of the coolest things I've done in a game in ages. And it's like you go out to this place which is in the middle of the ocean. And there's like a shiny thing in the air, like marking where you need to be. Yeah. And you're like, oh, all right, there's some like shipwreck, you know, here on the water. And you like dive in and like the siren starts singing to you. And as you're like swimming further and further down, there's like pockets of air so you can breathe. And like the siren just keeps singing. And then like you get to the bottom and like the, the, um, what's his ship called? The Black Pearl. Black Pearl. The Pearl is just there on the sea floor, and it's like this really amazing scene. And the game just like really smartly uh like coaxes you down there. Like, you know, you you're there for one thing, but like there's no markers or anything like that in Sea of Thieves. So it's just yeah. like you're just assuming, well, I'm gonna follow this trail of shipwrecks. Yeah. And bubbles. And there's like this beautiful siren song and there's all these colorful fish swimming everywhere. And like, it's like really, really well done. Nice. Um, really this like is- magical. Uh, and then you get to the bottom and the black pearls there. And it's like, oh my God, this is so sick. And it was so well, like, well, you know, it was like it's, you know, set up so perfectly that you're going to experience it no matter, no matter what the yeah. player is going to experience it like that even though it's all you know technically you could come at it from a different angle or whatever but it kind of it points you in the right direction it was very yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, awesome. very cool so yeah definitely going to continue to play that um and hopefully get through this weird bugged bit that we're up to because yeah. like you have to put the siren hearts in these statues and <laughs> i love we, doing like, that we <laughs> quit the night before and then load it up from the like chapter three bit that we're up to. Yeah. And that was fine. And then we slammed to the bottom and we're like, oh shit, we don't have the siren heart to get through this door. And I I looked it up and it's like, yeah, the siren heart spawns in your, on your ship when you start the mission again, but we just didn't see it. So we had to go back to the ship, swim all the way back down with the siren heart. When you're holding the siren heart, you can only swim like normal speed you can't like swim fast oh so that was our thing and then we got there put the siren heart in the thing and it just didn't let us continue it was like okay you're like sweet oh my god it was such a anticlimactic moment but yeah yeah definitely gonna keep playing uh it's really fun like the game is just so beautiful like this the ocean is the highlight of the whole thing like it looks so fucking good uh, and the sunsets and the clouds and everything are just amazing. So it's like really just so much fun just sailing across the high seas until you get murdered. But it's like, and then you're yeah, sad. Whatever, I guess, I guess, and then you pirates, cry. pirates be do. Uh, that is the pirate life. I mean, what, exactly. what can you expect? Exactly. 
And dead men tell no tales, they say. So they do say that, but <laughs> they them do. bitches so chatty, like <laughs> mm, especially skelly boys that can talk yeah. to you. Oh, but that's that's my experience on the high seas. So Let's good, but talk. also terrible. Good, but yeah, fraught with uh, uh server issues. <laughs> But just so fun. Like, I'm craving to play it more. Yeah. And, like, like please fix your shit up. Mad customization, and you can get pets. So I'm like, oh, I need to get a pet. I don't know how what to get a pet. What are you going to get? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what there is. If there's a I dog, I don't know anything. <laughs> give me the doggo. Um, Let's get a little shark. Oh. Swim around and follow you. That would be sick. Oh, my God. Can it be what like that? Aisle? That, um, oh, yeah, it's like in Loki. Yeah. <laughs> um, It'll be like that shark in Coromon that's like the super cute. Oh, shark, yeah, man. the really cute one. Well, you know what else would be a really great pet? A fucking a crab, a, just a large crab. Oh, no. I'd be a I'm gonna look this up. Dude, I'm a genius. See. I want to see. If these pets. If anyone uh, watching this live or after the fact um, has any tips on CFBs, I would love them because, man, it's a, it's a, Pirates oh, you get them from the Pirate Emporium. Is monkeys? Monkeys. You feed them. Types of pets. Capuchin. Capuchin, 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 forager monkey, capuchin, capuchin, heart monkey, capuchin, capuchin, Barbary. <laughs> oh, I guess it's also okay. a monkey. Oh, there's marmosets. marmosets. Macaws. Parrots. Oh, yeah. Cockatoos. Oh, fucking skeleton one. Oh, my God. There's actually wild cats. Wild cats. What are these? Ragamuffins. I don't know what the fuck that is. Fucking mouse, which is like a a cat, though. It's a cat. Oh, that's dogs. Dead mouse. See, skeleton. Dead mouse. Whippets. Emus. Oh, my God. There's Alsatians. And an emu. Oh, an emu. Emu. No, <laughs> an emu. emu. That would be sick. And then you've got fucking another whole list of other things. Pet outfits. Dude. Yeah. Nice. All right, Emporium. Well, there we go. So um, you should download it and play it with us. I should. I mean, I would like, I have wanted to play that game many times because it looks so fun to just be sailing on the high seas. So I definitely should. But I cannot say that I'm not disappointed that there's no fucking crab or alligator pet. Like those are Dude, easy additions. They're should... big, they're big time pirate pets as well. A crab would be yeah, so dope because it can swim as well. Yeah, imagine it just following you in the water. Like, I don't see, I don't see no marmoset going for a swim. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, fucking, oh, this is lost money. These guys are foolish. Oh, well. Uh, welcome, Laz, in the chat. Yeah, we got you hooked with the, with the title. Um, that's the plan, you know. That's the plan. Get people in here and get them hooked. Um, yeah, they have to stay. But before we cover anything to do with anything depressing, yeah, let's no talk fun. about Last Stop. I am... So excited to hear your thoughts on this. I I remember seeing this game like, fuck, I don't know when they showed it. Uh, Yonkies. It was a while ago. Yonkies, yeah. right? Uh, and thinking like, oh, this looks sick. Like, And you know how I was saying last week, I just want a game with no mechanics in it. Yes! I no was mechanics. like, this is perfect. <laughs> this is exactly what you wanted. Oh, my God. And like even some of the conversation options are completely pointless um but, <laughs> it's true <laughs> it's true but let's i'd love to hear your like high level thoughts overall you literally just got finished i just it. finished it. um so let's try not to be spoilery but yeah we yeah may have to count we'll some spoilers but, um give me your thoughts on last stop all righty so i'm gonna take it back to when you messaged me and said, you got to play Last Stop so that we can talk about it. And I thought to myself, all right, Elliot, I'll play Last Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, all right, it's free, whatever, I'll download it. I don't really care about this game. Like, I remember seeing it. The first trailer we saw was about the um, the guy's uh, storyline. 
Mm. Um, mm. And it was almost yeah. entirely about his storyline, the first trailer, as right. from what I heard. Interesting. And then uh, recently, well, not recently, but then the mo- more recent trailer where they added more information, they so- showed like the fucking Guitar Hero part. Um, oh, that bit you know. was so good. Yeah, and they showed all those other little bits, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is actually not what I thought it was. I'm a little bit more interested, but I wasn't like, it wasn't on my radar at all. So I was like, all right, I'll I'll download it. I'll play it. No worries. Um, I'll humor him. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'll fucking talk about this video game for you, bro. But it is so good. Like, I played yeah, it on stream. Like it. Yeah, I did like it. I played it on stream last night. Um, and I went to bed and I was still thinking about it. I was like, man, I want to keep playing <laughs> that game. And then I fucking had fucking dreams about some <laughs> fucking spooky man at, with fucking prompts everywhere <laughs> fucking oh, no. three-way prompts i was like oh no when <laughs> i was sleeping no, i got no. waking up all night being like what, what? where's the prompts <laughs> what's happening <laughs> but it was great it yeah. was great and oh, then like so good as soon as I got home from work today, like I popped, I popped it back on. I was like, I gotta finish this game before before the podcast, and it was mm. so good. Like, mm. that, there are a couple of things that I think could be improved, but oh, oh absolutely Jeff, for sure. Why is it? Why does it happen? Why does that happen? Like, <laughs> I know, the whole it's... rest of the story is so succinct, and then suddenly they're like, what the? <laughs> yeah, it, like. The whole way through it, you're wondering, like, where is this going? Like, how are these stories going to intersect? And so for anyone who's not aware of this game, it is, it's very much in the, in the vein of Telltale or, like, um, Life is Strange or something like that, where you're just controlling a player and essentially having conversations, but there are three kind of stories happening and you play them concurrently. Well, you play them... Each chapter, you choose which one to play in order, but then you have to play all three of them before you can play the second chapter. And they're yeah. completely unrelated, although there are some sections where you're like, oh, that's that person from this one, or that yeah. teacher is this, this guy's, this person's partner, or ex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. Really cool. And it's cool. It's like, oh, there's these little things. But um, so you're playing through these episodic things, and some of them go for 15, 20 minutes, some of them go for maybe 45 minutes. Some of them um, are like eight minutes long. Like the ones that I was doing last night before I finished my stream, I was like, I'll do one more bit. Yeah. And it went for like eight <laughs> minutes. And I was like, well, all right, I'll do one more. And it went for like eight <laughs> minutes. And I was like, well, maybe one more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I like how, I mean, I I couldn't put it down either. So I was like, I played it. Well, I had four days off work. So I like played four chapters in like one sitting kind of thing. Yeah, like I just sat I there and played, played it constantly. All the way up to chapter five. And then I s- smacked it out this afternoon, the rest of it. Mm, yeah. And then I finished it. Uh, and then I went back and I did the final chapter again to do the different uh, like decisions right at the end. Oh yeah. 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 Um, but it, the decisions you make throughout the game don't change anything at all. No. Which I like, I again, I was kind of fine with that. Um, it's like, I just wanted to have conversations with people. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I was absolutely wrapped with it. Um, what's, what kind of stood out for you? In a good way or? Yeah. 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 I mean, you can tell me where you think it needed improvement as well. I'd love to, love to hear that. We'll, we'll talk about improvements later. Let's talk about sure. good stuff. Um, hmm. I, I just loved the stories. Like, hmm. like each one, uh, Mina's was my least favorite. Like she was a bitch. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I did not. It's weird. My chat was literally like, make play. her die. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Well, but true. Like she's horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. but like the, otherwise like the stories, were really good and the little bits of intersection where you're like oh that's freaking john sitting at the bus stop or whatever as you walk Mm. past and like all that other stuff was like really well done i think and like to go to the doctor and be like oh that's felix like Mm. i know this dude i loved it i was all about that fucking shit i was like hell yes this is amazing Mm. and i think um 
I think the addition of the mini games sections, which is so far and few between, but like the the fucking piano guitar hero section and stuff like so that. So good. Uh, yeah, it was that, really good. It was yeah. it was needed, definitely. Yes. Um, yeah, it would have been nicer if there were a few more of those. I think so as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think um, the ones that they did put in there, they, I don't think I ever thought it was a bad fit. Like they all Mm. were like, like made the scene. Like they were so good. Um, Mm. Mm. So I was really, really happy with like the story progression, everything. I just, I just wanted to keep going. Like, yeah, great. That's why I like, couldn't put it down because it was very much like a TV show where it's like, it gets to the end and you're like, no, 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 I'm not ready to stop. Yeah. Like, and like, I really liked Donna's story. I thought that was like the most, it was very surreal and you didn't know what the hell was going on. And yeah, um, which is so funny because like Donna's was really abstract and uh, the you know Freaky Friday one was uh, is it Freaky Friday? Yeah, that was called? kind of uh, weird. That that was kind of weird, but also like it's a it's a trope that's been done a million exactly, times. Exactly. Yeah, and then, then Mina's was Mina's just kind of normal. Like, it didn't have any of that supernatural stuff going on. It was like just this family drama, and it was so weird that how different they all were. Absolutely. Like, yeah. like Donna's was like so insane and like when i i don't know what order you played them in i played every chapter i played exactly the same i did donna then i did john and then i did mina and donna john mina donna john mina every single time um which i think i I started but i yeah yeah because i i started and i was like i want to do donna like she seems the coolest i'm gonna follow Mm. that storyline and then i was like oh i'm doing all three um whatever and so then I went John and then Mina and I, mm. immediately Mina was the worst John yeah, whatever like Donna it. was yeah. the best but about halfway through I was like nah John's story is my favorite like that tropey one is absolutely my favorite one like Donna when it- still a good story but move over <laughs> Um, Laz asking, what are the game mechanics in Last Stop? Is it like Telltale or like the homies that made Until Dawn? It's a much more Telltale, uh, except with fewer actual decisions that matter. Like yeah. your decisions are maybe they matter in the moment, but they're not like, they're not overarching throughout the story. Yeah, that except maybe a couple of things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, except maybe a couple of things where like, someone reacts to it differently down the line, but it's very much lads. Just uh, you choose a response to dialogue, like for dialogue uh, and you move around like fixed camera angles and stuff like yeah, that. So occasionally very, quick very telltale. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I loved, I loved the, like some, of, some of John's story literally had me, cracking up laughing John's like story the, was so good <laughs> the bit where he goes to work as the game developer was just yeah. like so <laughs> so funny <laughs> and like then the end of, ending of that where like uh it's just I don't know if that can play out in two different ways but I guess not I don't think so because like all of the options no. are like I'm not fucking staying for overtime you crap yeah ass. true like, true like they, you know, they kind of touch on crunch, and yeah, like, I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, like crunch, they, yeah, <laughs> they they like kind of get into, you know, some of the the stuff that's happening at Blizzard at the moment, or like wide spread throughout the game industry is like yeah. these heads of the studios that are like real, you know, boys club assholes, and um, I think that was, you know, it was cool to have that little bit because like the people playing your game. Our gamers, the people making the game, our game developers, yeah. who who better to, you know, parody video game like culture, culture. like yeah. development culture than actual video game developers. You know, when it's like in a TV show or a movie, it's like, mm, like yeah. that's a bit weird. But in a game, you could like, be it's so... talking about your own industry right now. Like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, I thought that was, it was really funny. Like I was losing my shit laughing. I <laughs> loved it as well. Cause it was like, it was the most so wholesome storyline too. Yes. Like that yeah. they would 
like become like like grow this um like these interpersonal relationships and mm. like it felt more impactful because of all like all of the uh intertwining parts were like like mm. you know so i was thinking about when i was playing it like you, you've done the body swap like old man has gone into young man's body young man has gone into old man's body like how hard is that on like them and then there's a kid involved as well mm. like it's just like it's, i feel like it's the right. deepest story like yes. out of, out uh, of yeah. them all absolutely she was fucking fantastic as well she was hilarious she was so good and like yeah you're right it definitely was it was like the trope of all tropes the body swap yeah. but it just was so well executed um that it was it was brilliant and like you really you really were rooting for john by the end like yeah i just found him so um endearing (laughs) absolutely even at the start i was like this poor guy he's got a hard life you know he could he could be doing better by his daughter but he's trying like yeah oh the setup fully was like oh it cut deep like yeah you feel for that guy you feel for the kid yeah Uh, (laughs) whereas like i think donna's even though it was great it was like so surreal and everything that happened in that story was immediately so high stakes right like mm, they went from mm. this little kind of wibbly wobbly line and then whoo, like everything is top tier like mm. a huge impact major choices sort of thing um mm. and then mina's was just uh she was shit not the story yeah but she was shit so <laughs> yeah she she was just a shit person but yeah i think like I think that's a riskier move to create a like a character yeah. who's just an Crap absolute Ola. cunt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. I kept saying like, that as well. I was like, "This bitch, you is just cunt, massive." You jerk. just <laughs> you don't want to be her. Like you do no. not want to play. Like I played the chapters, like wanting to see where the story went, but feeling yeah. like being like oh this like, lady sucks i want to respond differently to, than what i can actually that i'm allowed to respond yeah to. yeah there are a few times that i thought that across um a couple of the chapters like wh- which i think is where it, it really pulls you into realizing that your response doesn't actually matter because no. there's yeah. there's times like um in donna's for example where you're talking to more of like an authority figure not necessarily like or or your sister or your mother or whatever Mm. um and you can only choose to lie and like even if it's like Mm. oh give them a little bit of the truth which is what i tried to do even if you go down that path it always ends up being you are lying to them and like Mm. at the end on when you finally do get to choose uh the truth and you're you're telling them about what's happening um like even then, like she doesn't believe you, and you just give up. You're like, oh, okay, sorry. It's like, why? Mm, yeah, like, why? Like yeah. these choices are not the choices that I thought I would be able to make or wanted to make. So that, even though that was right, I, I think it was mostly that that happened to me in Donna's story. Um, mm. Like, obviously, I needed to go down the one path, and um, like, I don't mind that because it was a great story. But I, I wish the conversations were voiced or acted out slightly different to push you towards those answers as opposed to just blocking you from an answer that you might want to say. Yeah. Yes. Because like, it's a, it's a linear story, no matter what dialogue yeah. you choose, like the same thing will play out as far yeah. as I could tell. Yeah. People uh, might be angrier or happier, but it feels yeah. like you're going down the same path. Yeah. And I think that's, it's like, you can't really make a game where there isn't dialogue choices and you just walk from one point and then watch a 15 minute cutscene. Yeah. Like that doesn't have that interactivity. Yeah. That again, like that, you know, players of a video game want, you Absolutely. know, so you've got to have something there, even if you choosing, like, cause even some of the conversations is like, I don't know. B might be like, so I can't remember exactly, but B is something and Y is something. And I pressed Y and it actually said the words that, that were in B. 
but yeah. in a different tone. Absolutely. As well. Yeah, and it's like I had that a few times as well. Uh, it it's. I don't know if I always like, hate I, those little things. They're never, they're never what I want them to be. You're like, yeah. you're like, I don't know. And they're like, well, I don't fucking know, man. Why don't you go <laughs> figure it out? Go jump in the hole. And you're like, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think there are a few, I don't know. There are a few like weird, like logical leaps or like, yeah. I don't know. Like, like it, it doesn't something would happen. And then linear. it's like, yeah, no, that's that's fine with me as well. Yeah, but there were some wished, bits in it, Donna's story that were like, wait, what? Yeah, how did this, what? How did we get here? Yeah, definitely. Like the cuts between some of the scenes were a bit like, which was which was okay. Like because I feel that they wanted you to be a bit confused mm. to like imitate yeah, yeah. what she was feeling, which sure. was absolutely fine. I just I and I absolutely love the linear story that they've told. I just wish that the conversations that they'd chosen to craft made more sense in some areas like mm. like why am i talking uh about something like i have an option that you don't give me like mm. just make that conversation uh more aggressive on your side or like just word your like your questioning sentence differently to me so that these answers make more sense and i'm not looking for another answer that you haven't put there like you can you can force your viewer to take a certain like stand or to be more likely to have a certain answer and i thought it was weird when in some cases they would ask me a question and the answer that i wanted wasn't a choice yeah and i think that happened actually a fair bit as well where it's like wait i don't want to respond in one of these three ways the the obvious response obvious is where the the previous dialogue was kind of leading you but it wasn't there yeah yeah i think yeah absolutely yeah. spot on yes yeah, so i think they could have um mm, maybe tightened that in a little bit even though mm. i absolutely loved it i definitely like i feel like i experienced that mostly in donna's storyline mm -hmm. um and a little bit in mina's but only because i as mina i didn't want to play her character i wanted to turn her character around me so, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when I saw that my answer wasn't there, it wasn't as much of a like an issue for me as it was in Donna's because I would be like, okay, my answer's not there because that's not her. Like she wouldn't say that sort of stuff. Mm, like I'm okay. It would yeah. like kind of force me back into playing as her. Whereas in Donna, like I, I didn't feel that as much. I felt more like, well, why why am I answering this? Like this is a schoolgirl. Like she you probably would ask for help after doing nangs and fucking having yeah. a bad time. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, uh, what's a... gas? Oh, nangs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, you do. You do need to play this game, Laz, and you will wither away if you don't. And it's only about, what, seven hours long, I think? Well, the ending I played... chapter probably took longer than half of the, half of the game. I played three and a little bit hours last night and i played two and a bit hours okay. so yeah. mine was probably just under six yeah okay for sure yeah nice um i must say though without spoilers the ending is wild like Wacko. one of the most why did it go like, that direction <laughs> it got us from being this small london story yeah three stories where they're really like, self-contained, but there's a bit of weirdness and a bit of supernatural yeah. bit to of being war. literally the out. most bugged out fucking ending of a game <laughs> ever. And excellent. It's like, and so it didn't, good. And it didn't it make so me go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it didn't make me go, no, this doesn't make sense. It was like, okay. Yeah, I, of I course. Can, absolutely. I'm on board with this weird shit. And like, how, like, you kind of forget halfway through the game, what happens in the prologue, like the little yeah. two minute prologue, five minute prologue. Yeah, absolutely. And then you're like, oh my God, like that's, it's just so, so good. And some of the just like Vape Lord and- Vape Lord, I saw that it... right at the start as his like voice actor credit came up and I was like, Vape yes. Lord, <laughs> that's going to be my favorite character. And you know what? I think he was. <laughs> I and already Ron, told Ron. you, it's Vape Lord. <laughs> <It's> Vape Lord. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god! Such and a good name. Is it Ron, the guy, the the, the with the podcast? Oh yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. So good. <laughs> I knew so- it. <laughs> I knew <laughs> it. So oh my good. god! You know there was um yes you one- do shred yes you do yeah definitely shred. There was one other it's thing so um that I thought well that got me a few times right, and it was the camera cuts and the way they force you to walk. The directions mm. in some, in not some, but many cases. I don't know where the fuck I'm going. Am I going up or down or left or right? So I'm mm. fucking wasting my time walking around while they're having a conversation, which is mm. fine. Walk and have a conversation. But like, also, as soon as I switch screen, like I've been walking up to get to the next screen and I pop in the next screen and I'm actually supposed to be walking down. So then my character goes, what? And like turns the fuck around. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? Like, Were you, Are you playing on PC? Yeah, but I played on controller. On a controller. Because yeah. I noticed that in some of the game, if you keep holding the direction you were previously holding. It would keep it, going it, like no matter which knows. way you were supposed to be facing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Right. And then it would like halfway through my screen i'd be like okay i'm i'm pressing up but i've come into this new screen and that's fine it's still walking me full up no i'm going up now like right yeah i think it's sometimes it like it thinks you've moved the controller and then it's like well i should be going this way but i just fixed camera angles always give me the shits for that exact reason yeah because like piss me off changes yeah it'll be going from pushing up to pushing down but you'll still be walking and then yeah. you're pushing out. It's like, it's just, yeah, it's just, I think, the nature of fixed camera angles. But yeah, yeah it's kind of annoying. It's annoying. I also noticed, I think they had two ways of uh, gating how long you were spending on those screens. And one of them was you have to walk through the whole screen and we'll tell you as much dialogue as we can while you're on mm. screen. So you can, um, like, just walk from one end to the other and it's pretty much perfectly paced. Um, but I'm an asshole and didn't realize. So I would be walking with my partner and be like, woo and walking around in circles and making them <laughs> spin and stuff. And so then we're not talking for the, like for 40 yeah. seconds as I got to slowly walk to the edge of the screen. And then other ones, uh, as soon as the conversation is finished, you just move to the next screen. You don't even have to finish walking off the screen. Mm. Um, and mm. I think they should have just stuck with that one. I didn't need extra walking time. I didn't need that. Like I wanted the story and I don't give a shit about walking. Yeah, I I think that's such a problem in so many games is either you run and the same thing's been happening in Yakuza 0 is like if you're running and you're having a conversation, that conversation gets cut off by the time you reach your destination. Or if you walk for like, yeah, a minute, they'll be saying nothing and it feels really weird um, because they're they're just walking in silence and that conversation's over. Um, yeah. the same thing happens all the time in like Red Dead and GTA and stuff because you do so many conversations while you're on the move. But if you drive yeah. too far to get there, you'd like, ah, oh, shit, Cut it this off. conversation I didn't just even th- finish. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was so good that in some cases when the conversation finished, they would just cut it and you'd be onto the next screen. And I just don't understand why they didn't do that for all of it. Like yeah. the, the ability to walk around those areas when I didn't even know which direction I was supposed to go was mm. not useful. Mm. Yeah, true. I think, I, like, I noticed towards the end of the game as well, there's a few bits where, like, they have really cool cinematic camera angles as well. But, like, yeah. a lot of the game they don't. It's just, like, you're walking down a street. And then at the end, yeah, there's, like, this really cool away. shot. <laughs> yeah. It's this amazing shot where you're above and she's walking. Yeah. I think it's I think it's uh, Mina. She's, like, yeah. walking down the street and it's an above shot and it's kind of following her. I think that was excellent. And they, I would love to see more of that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Um, but that's real nitpicky. It's fucking yeah. excellent. Like, I was say, like in some so cases, fun. you have like the same camera angle for different characters to run through the same space so that you know that it's the same space. So I totally get that. Mm. But um, sometimes in Donna's story, I would be like, where the heck am I? And then I'd like turn the corner and be like, oh, this is the building. Like, and like, (laughs) we came to that building from so many different angles. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, so I do agree that like some of those camera angles could probably be um, a bit nicer. One of the ones that really stood out to me was when he was, um, when John was making um, like omelets or whatever he was making and your camera was like in the pan. That was a cool camera angle. Oh, yeah. 
At first, oh, I was like, what's that. happening? And then I was like, oh, that's a spatula. I'm, oh, I'm right. food. <laughs> <laughs> I am food. I am food. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, it is great. I just, I cannot get over the ending. Like, the the final chapter. So like, wild. <laughs> Why did that happen? Fucking. Like, if I can just express to people how much they got to play this game. It's so good. It and is like, really, really good. And I was looking at. It's got like a 70 on Metacritic, which I think, I don't know. It's it's so hard because a 70. It is 70. A, right. a 70 when it comes I to video games 10 is 10. like really shit. Yeah, I know. Gameformer gave it gave it a 8. This says um, 96% liked this video game. Yeah, right. Um, but then some stupid website gave it a two out of five stars and that's like a 40 and it's like, this is not a 40. This is so yeah. much better than that. Like maybe it's a seven. It's not, you know, it's not a technological powerhouse at all. In fact, no, the graphics sometimes are Sometimes the shoulders are like, bleh, bleh, bleh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the, the graphics, the graphics are deliberately not good. And I love yeah. that. It's like, it does not look like a modern game at all. No. But it's just so well written. And the voice acting is really, really good. Like excellent voice acting. Um, I love that it's English as well. I just, I could listen to English accents uh, all day, especially when so many things are in US accents. I could just yeah. listen to them all day in an English accent. And the bit at the end, <laughs> John, John's like, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. If you think you're hard enough. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> He's like standing there like this. If you think you're hard enough, ah oh, fuck! <laughs> so good. Oh my god, so good. Um, and that also, uh, well, I'm sure we'll wrap this up in a minute. But I think what's really cool was and it's, it's a long time since I was a teenager, but um, the bit where they're having names and like just hanging okay. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, which I didn't get the achievement because I didn't realise if you miss something, you don't get the achievement. But whatever. Idiot! I know. I didn't get the achievement for putting the books on the shelf because I was like, I gotta get, I gotta go. Like Elliot's <laughs> waiting for me, and I was like, oh shit, I put these on the wrong shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Um, but I think like just that that first scene with the like Donna and um, Vivek uh, and Vivek and Becky, like felt really real. Like felt legitimately yeah like how this teenagers is a interact yeah 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 it was clever it was really clever and then just you know hanging out uh i thought that was really really great so um yeah any last thoughts on last stop not so good like i think maybe like it's because you don't see this sort of narrative in video games so much, but it felt like really clever narrative. When you break mm. it down into what it is, like obviously you can see where everything, like ha- like how it was created, and it, like it's it's there's no puzzle behind it once you see it laid bare, um, yeah. which is absolutely fine. But I think it's it's really really well done um, narrative storytelling um, for a video game. I don't think you you get to see a lot of that in connectedness often. Mm. Um, and uh, I made sure Mina had a shit life. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Eat shit, you dog. That's what you get for being a jerk. I don't think I've ever hated a protagonist as much as I hated her. She was real bummo. She was bummo. What are, you um, what are your last thoughts? Hit me. I think, I think it was excellent. And I think, yeah, it's such a unique narrative because it's, it's somehow simultaneously very small scale and also like the highest stakes of all time. Yeah. Like, and it's so clever how it gets you there without ever, like without feeling like, how did we get here? You're like, okay. You're like, like, this makes sense. Yeah. Even though it makes no sense. And it was so like, so funny. Not a lot of games are legitimately funny. Um, and it was if you think you <laughs> I had to write that, that down because I was like, so This funny. is so because <laughs> I went back and played it again. I was like, It's just 
so excellent good. and like the character development was great like the the characters were great as much as i hated mina you hated her because like she was a bad person but yeah. she wasn't badly written or anything like no. that she was just like an absolute bitch um and that was cool donna's was completely different like you really yeah you you feel for them and yeah i think and I, john's was so john's grounded was, in reality like yeah even though like, it was a freaky friday are, thing yeah right but like those are such hard like uh instances that he's living through and uh, like mm. something about it you, uh, dude i've really felt for that guy for yeah. that fake pixel man and was his was his like was his kid's mum donna's mum no 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 I just, well, like, I, I don't know if she's related dead. back to the other characters or. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, I wasn't sure if she, I, I for a very long time, I thought she was dead, right? Mm. Um, because the, like, the, the way that she was talked about. But there was one um, line towards the end um, in the final chapter um, when he said something about. Um, Someone like, like about, leaving or like yeah yeah like talking about how someone was like someone like leaving I think a relationship Jack is him. a bad choice or something like that or is like a mm. shit thing to do like if you're just like like walking out on your family sort of thing like he mm. made a, a comment like that and I was like wait is she alive like mm. is she somewhere is she one of these characters that we know like I have no idea that that one is a mystery mm. 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 for sure for sure very good. Very good. That was a great conversation. Holy shit. It's been like Love 40 that minutes. Classic Love that guy. game. Definitely go and check that out. It's on Game Pass for console and PC. Um, and it's it's excellent. It's and I'm worth so, I love the length. Hours. I was a, yes, uh, me too. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk about Blizzard. Let's do it. So. Like, Shizzard. Shiz. I, don't, I really don't know where to start here. Um, it, here's how we start. Um, as a breakdown, Blizzard has let everybody down again. After they mm. put up that fucking statue outside their headquarters, every Ugh. voice matters. <laughs> they fucking... Uh. <laughs> Big dickheads. Freaking uh, just classic massive sexism. From what I understand, that's that's it. Fucking saying horrible shit to ladies, being horrible towards ladies. One of the the fucking things that has really stayed in my mind from the article that I read was how they would get drunk at work and do like stall crawls. Oh yeah, through the different women's uh like cubicle offices. What the fuck does that mean? What the hell is that? How do you, how, how does that, how does like that culture get so embedded into your workplace that you can get drunk at work and fucking do cubicle crawls? Like, I don't understand, like, how deep gross. in the doo doo do you have to be to where that ever happens like mm. how, i don't understand how you could like observe that behavior and not have anything said or like or have it repeat multiple times like it just it really i think for that that one for me it just really shows like how like deep that fucking doo-doo must be for mm. that to be an occurrence like that's fucking wacko and like that is just I, I guess I, I can't even, like, comprehend that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what? But, it like, doesn't it make any seems, sense. It seems like management is in on a... It seems like it's ha happening throughout Activision as well as Blizzard. Um, yeah. Their responses to it have been, like, really weird Shit. and just terrible. And, and like there's been a lot of this kind of stuff come from all over the industry uh, Absolutely. blizzard big one also ubisoft last year and like not like i hope ubisoft are doing the right thing i never really trust ubisoft or any big corporation like that but yeah. like they layoffs happened people left it seemed like they were taking it seriously but it's like 
it's like Blizzard have just gone, oh no, I don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't happen here. And then like more and more and more women are coming out with yeah. their stories and like people are now speaking out of, you know, I read one today. It was so sad. And she was like, she's at Blizzard for 20 years, but like from the day she started, she was experiencing that kind of shit. And like, thinks it's like has like massive imposter syndrome because yeah of finding out that she really only got a promotion because she was a woman and they you know like yeah they're like trying to not, hit their quality but, quotas and shit well no like that. not sorry not even in a, a good way because she was an attractive lady with good body and you know like yeah that was why she got picked so it wasn't even like Oh, we need to, like a diversity thing. It was strictly a sexist thing, and that yeah. is just like what, like why? So now, after a long career, she now feels like she doesn't deserve the career that she's had, and that's even fucking worse because, like, she obviously does. She's worked on fucking yeah. huge games for you know, a, twenty years is a long time. Um, and she she even named and shamed one of the one of the heads. I can't remember who it was, but it's like it's Too many just names to disgusting that all this shit is coming out. And like, there's videos being shared of like, you know, that woman who like asks um, like a panel, like a Blizzard panel at, at BlizzCon a few years ago. Um, you know, when uh, like I I really love your games. I really love these characters, but when are they going to not look like they're straight out of a Victoria's Secret catalog. And yeah. Um their response is like, oh, what do they say? They're like, oh like what catalog? Uh you know, like what catalog is it? And then they're like, and she kind of asks again and they're like, oh, what catalog would you like us to like get our designs yeah. from? It's just like this, you pretend now that none of this ever existed or you didn't know it happened and, you know, yeah. oh, we, we hate frat boy culture. J. Allen Pratt came out and he was like, you know, we despise, um, you know, frat boy culture. But he's on this panel having a laugh with these guys and making this woman feel really uncomfortable in front of thousands of people, mind you. Like this is yeah. not like it's a, not that it makes any fucking difference, but it's not that like it's a, a place where there's not thousands of people standing around. And when she asked the question, all the females in the audience like yeah. cheer and yeah. all the dudes boo. And it's like, yeah. come on. Like this is a legitimate question. Yeah. And they, they have the most asshole answer. And, but then Jay Allen Brack has the fucking audacity to come out and write these. It doesn't have to be yeah. Write these like, you know, emails to staff saying oh you know i hate this culture and it's like fuck off man this is like yeah, you're the head of this company you to keep yourself safe mm. fuck off. yeah like i follow um obviously uh, a large art uh you know a lot of art personalities on mm. twitter um thus because this is where my interests lie. However, like so, so many people were like, can we really be surprised that the people making like all of these sexy women for like year after year and never bothered to clothe them in anything else? Like, can we be surprised that that is the, <laughs> like their culture? Yeah. Like after everything that, like after everything that the people playing that game have asked, just just in those interactions, like you said, isolated to what people want from the characters of the game they're playing and how the developers are responding to that like you can you can see the cracks just through that like and and if you're having all of these things happen that they're reporting in these articles like Bleh! like the pff, yucko i can't i can't like it's it's so hard because on one hand you're like i'm not surprised like this is a industry and not even this industry it's just like a, a creative industry issue but on the mm. other hand it's so surprising what the fuck are you doing like it's not that hard to not be trash mm -hmm. yeah i know and like it it's no longer an industry where like it's just a bunch of blokes sitting around in their basement making a video game. Like yeah. we're long past that. We're talking about some of the biggest companies 
and well, the biggest money in the world. Yeah. You know, like it's not appropriate. It, it was never appropriate even when they were sitting in their basements. But like these aren't small companies. They need to be held to the same standard as any other company for any of this shit. And they just yeah. like get away with it for years upon years. And the, I think the big discourse around this online at the moment is just how how do you like show your support for the developers and show your disdain for this kind of culture Mm. without like is voting for your wallet enough i've heard this conversation like so many times and i just i don't i don't know the answer i'd love to hear your opinion on this because like is is not buying the next call of duty is not buying wow paying for wow is not buying diablo actually solving the problem or are you just now like is that kind of thing going to just affect the the actual artists and the developers on the ground floor yeah. more than than continuing to buy and support those people who you respect for the for the work that they yeah. do i think um like it's obviously it feels so obvious that any sort of voting with your wallet only affects the people that are doing the hard work, you know? And whilst um, those people may be like doing fucking drunk cubicle crawls, it's also the person that is sitting there trying to do their work as fucking drunk guys come through and be a bitch to you. Like it's people, it's the good and the bad. But I think for an issue like this, even though you have the bad at the ground level, like what you're really trying to target is the higher level. Like you need to break it from the top down. If you just go, oh, well, these are the four guys that did this crawl, get Mm. rid of them and bring in four new guys. You've still got the manager upstairs who didn't care that they did that, that Mm. saw it and didn't fucking do anything. So Mm -hmm. I think like, I don't know how we get companies to enact that change. I think voting with your wallet is good because if they, even if it is a momentary thing, like I know I've seen a lot of people being like, yeah, I'm like quitting my subscription to where I'm not coming back. And a lot of people will do that and they might come back in like three months or something. Um, But if they can like, as shitty as it sounds like there are people that care about those numbers of the sales going up and down and all they care about is the reputation and the brand image, like that sort of thing. And Mm -hmm. I think if you target that, that's probably the easiest way to actually get change in the business. Because if, if stocks and things are going down, not necessarily just the consumers aren't purchasing it, then they know they have to make the changes. Otherwise, um, like their company is going to go to the poo poo. And that's the yeah. only thing that's going to make them want to change. Otherwise they've got a baked in culture with, you know, high level uh, creatives that are hard to replace. Um, and like uh, when you're replacing those sorts of creatives whilst you're in a media storm, it's harder. So they don't really want to do that um, because who knows who wants to come and work at this place, et cetera, et cetera. Like mm. it's st- stupid but like all people can do is put social pressure on them. Like the consumers don't get that much of a say, like Mm. people can only do what they can. Yeah. I think it's, it's such a nuanced situation. Like, because the, I guess the, the biggest problem is like, like you say, the people at the top top who allowed that to go on, are going to be the ones making the the decisions to fire the fall guys, right? Like to fire the people that they're like, well, you know, this allegation is coming against you. Yeah, they're going to fire the four dudes that did it and the 15 girls that spoke out about it, right? So the people that are going to get hurt are the people that are already having a hard time and and some dickheads, but mostly people that are already having a hard time or like like just the bottom level teams where they're like, you know, we've come across financial hardship because of the shit like jobs that our managers have done, whatever, we're going to let these people go. But it probably is not going to be the person up here 
that is like letting that culture seep. Like they're they're probably going to stay. So voting with your wallet, like it does matter, but it also doesn't matter. So it's it's mm-hmm. hard. Like I encourage it, of course, because like how else are you going to get a message through? But at the same time, like you you can't be a concert uh, like you can't always be a conscious consumer and if you were you wouldn't be able to buy anything or enjoy anything exactly yeah because everything's yeah. created unfortunately with some amount of shit in it so like yeah you're a hundred percent right there and it's like if people want to play the next diablo or you know if people want to if people want to buy the next diablo specifically to feel like they are supporting those artists and programmers and everybody at the bottom, then that's their prerogative. And that's, if that's the stance they want to take, I think like yeah. good on them. If someone also decides, no, I, I want to show my disdain for this by not buying it and not supporting the guys at the top. I think that's a fair yeah, perfect. argument to have as well. But like, it's funny They're i think like equal perspectives what, to the same thing like yeah and like you're right like i even think i don't i don't buy a lot of activision blizzard games i don't yeah. like i i play in the last two years sekiro and uh tony hawks and oh i bought crash 4 but it's like it's the same with you know ea they have all these dodgy consumer practices like it's the same with Ubisoft. They're having all these. It's like if you, like you say, it's the same in you, literally you, like every media as well. well also like that, you, yeah. Don't buy food, like, food, yeah. What the yeah. fuck happened to that? Like, where'd that come yeah. from, and what conditions is that created under? Like, like, yeah. It's like, oh, this thing that I've been buying for years, food thing I've been buying. Oh, that company is owned by Nestle, and they're just like destroying the planet. It's like, fuck. What? Like, like how fifty thousand brands are owned by Nestle? You can't like. Exactly. The same, you know, six brands own 90% of everything in the world or some yeah. bullshit like that. And it, like, it's so hard to be a conscious consumer, like you said. It's it's impossible, pretty much. But I think yeah. at least having the conversation and, like, being aware of it, because so many people, yeah. like Yeti, Yeti is saying it's not enough. Uh, to vote for your wallet, I assume, because I get three more customers after everyone they lose. Yeah. And you're probably right. You're probably absolutely right because Call absolutely. of Duty will come out. And and I can almost guarantee that, like, 90% of people who buy Call of Duty, 90% of people who buy, you know, FIFA and stuff like that, and um, they don't follow video game news. Yeah, They're just like, oh, right. that's that new Call of Duty that I've not heard anything about, but I like Call of Duty. I'm just going to buy it. They don't know yeah. what the fuck's going on at Activision Blizzard. Like they and they don't. They probably are, are fine being ignorant to that, and that is fine yeah. as well. Because like it, you know, I don't know, you know, the history of some movie studio of a fucking film that's coming out. I just exactly. it's not a world I'm in. I'm just like, oh yeah, I like that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't expect everybody um, to have like a stance on everything that they consume because mm. you would drive yourself insane thinking about like the pros and cons of whether or whether you're not, you should support. I mean, I think mm. exactly like you said, like if you choose to support, to support the ground level and like, you want to keep helping those people that are struggling. Awesome. If you choose not to buy because you don't want to pay the big man also awesome. Like so long mm. as like you're, so long as you like, I feel like if you've got a voice in the conversation on that, even it, like either side, if you are buying in or if you're like opting out, like you're helping like ease the situation or, or rectify the situation by making that conversation uh, continue. And I think mm-hmm. like if, mm-hmm. if there's anything else that people can do, um, obviously donating to people or to charities or whatever um that like the people affected uh linked with would be a good choice but another thing is like if you're really concerned about the ground level creatives um you can often find out who these people are and like mm. follow them on social media often yeah. creatives in by in their content. commissions or exactly they normally have commissions or like a link tree <clears throat> where they have like yeah. I don't know a site where they sell a shirt sometimes or you know his mm. freaking 
I don't know, like a coffee donation or whatever, like, or just follow them and retweet some of their stuff or watch their content, you know. Um, yeah, make more story. people are aware of what, yeah. what's happening out there. Yeah. That's all you can do. You can't do everything. We can't, like, the average person can't fight these corporations. Like, Unfortunately not. No. Unfortunately not. 17 hours ago, I, just, I don't know if you've seen this, but I just noticed this is, oh, my God, Bloomberg, you are terrible. There's, like, this much <laughs> screen that's not an ad. <laughs> oh, my God. Classic. Um, 17 hours ago, Jason Schreier posted this one up. Uh, nearly a 1,000 current and former Activision Blizzard employees have signed a letter calling calling the company's response uh, to the lawsuit abhorrent and insulting. Also, the fact that it is a lawsuit, hopefully that, you know, causes some yeah. shit. Um, I mean, even lawsuits, like, there's limits on how much you can be asked to pay out and whatever. And mm -hmm. as we said, these are, like, this is, like, the literally the biggest industry um, in the world. Like, the, the amount of money that's coming in is ridiculous. So lawsuit or no, whatever the punishment will be is probably not going to be enough. Like, anything that comes mm -hmm. out of the court is... Is, it's not. It's yeah. It's not going to change the company significantly yeah. enough to to eradicate all these issues. When you've got enough money, like the law is nothing. You just pay it off, and you're on yeah. your way. Fucking, yeah. you just had to pay for an expensive sexual harassment claim, and off you go. You can do it again because you could probably pay for it seven times over or more. And in sadly, six, <laughs> and in six or twelve months' time, no one's going to remember that. Like, no, you know, no one, it. no one is a fucking, is a Broad term. exaggeration. It's, humor will forget. Exactly. The average Joe, it's like the, the, the shit last year with uh, the free Hong Kong, right? That was Blizzard and everyone boycotted them for five seconds. And then it was just like, oh yeah, it's all good now. Moving and on. this is like. It's just, yeah, it, it's so typical. This is that conscious consumerism. Like, like every single thing that happens in the world is linked to something else like mm, and you, mm. you it's it doesn't stop laz is saying i'll be grabbing diablo 2 not for blizzard but to support vicarious visions the people who worked hard to bring this to us in 2021 absolutely and that is like a perfectly beautiful like respectable way to to go about it right like you're supporting that studio you're supporting these these people on the ground floor who are literally the ones doing the work like i don't know if jay allen brack or whatever even do the work anymore or if they're just like the head of the company no they do one meeting a day if that fucking dogs and mini yeti says great quote uh because the games aren't great without the people fuck yeah exactly um spot on lads spot on spot uh on, lads spot on um the so there's yeah there's a full letter here i'm not going to read it all because it's very long um just yeah, essentially yeah. complaining uh at the end of it it's like we stand with all our friends teammates and colleagues as well as the members of our dedicated community who have experienced mistreatment or harassment of every kind we will not be silenced we will not stand aside and will not give up until the company we love is a workplace we can all feel proud to be part of again uh we will be the change and i think that's Awesome because they're instead of just being like, How we're out, fuck you. Oh, fucking thousands. Um, they're saying, you know, this is the this is the place we love because they're probably surrounded by amazing creative people. Yeah. And like they do Not great. Not everyone's work. a fucking dickhead. <laughs> just the fucking says, just the bosses. Well, it says in 2012 they had four thousand seven hundred employees. So Probably Holy a shit. ton more than that. Is that just Blizzard or Activision Blizzard? Uh, that says just Blizzard Entertainment. Wow. Uh, but as, oh, here we go. As of the 31st of December, 2020, Activision Blizzard has a total of about 9,500 employees, 65% in North America. That is a lot. That's a lot that of employees. a lot. Which um, I think... Is also interesting if a thousand employees are signing that letter, you know, like one in nine has signed mm. that letter. Can those numbers well, be better? Yeah. Absolutely. But if you go into a fucking shopping center, not now, COVID is bad, don't go to the shops. But like if you think <laughs> about like a space that you've been in 
And how many people is nine people and one in nine people being like, like if you gather that, that's a lot of people very quickly. <laughs> like, mm. Yeah, st- like standing up for something they believe in, which, yeah. you know, probably one in nine in a public place wouldn't, you know, if they saw something shit yeah. going on. Exactly. You know, eight people would walk past. Mm. It's a whole thing. Mm. All right. Anything else you want to say upon that shit show? Eat dirt, you fucking bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that all food turns to dirt in your mouth. <laughs> you never That's say actually, that anything again. <laughs> oh, my God. That is actually such a harsh thing. <laughs> I wish that all food turns to dirt in your mouth. <laughs> That's <is> brutal. <laughs> That's what oh, they deserve. No, I'm just going to do something here. Go for it. Look, that's what they get for being little tooty bitches. They could be enjoying food, but now I've cursed them. <laughs> Anyone who is mean to women's in the workplace, eat dirt forever. I'm just going to do <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's talk um, real quick here about uh, probably my most anticipated game, except maybe Halo. Uh, so about Forza Horizon Five. Forza! Yes. Um, I'm just going to put this on uh, to have some look at some pretty visuals. Um, Perfect. I didn't realize there was a whole stream. It's so. Who are these uh, people? So good. Oh, Mini Yeti's got a question. Uh, quick question. If you could have life as a normal person in a video game, which one would it be? Oh, I love this. Um, fuck. Can we, Mini Yeti, is it okay if we um, make this a topic for our next podcast episode? Because I think I need to think about this. Come Me up with too. a really good response. I think I think we could break it down as well. I think we could make, um, I think we could create more questions out of this. Like who, in which video game would I like to be just me? transplanted in you know like Ooh, i good. have to figure out like i have to live fucking the life there or which like who would i like to be a um protagonist or like not necessarily the main but like a side character like where would i like to be for that i think we could break <laughs> it into like a couple of different sections because like Can't, my favorite knowing us we could break it into a, a whole hour long podcast yeah <laughs> Like, I love Dark Souls, but I don't think I'd want to go into Dark Souls. I think, like, in some cases, I think I, I would be good at being in Dark Souls. I can punch really, I can kick really well. Like, my legs are strong. <laughs> but would I want to be in a Dark Souls world? Well, seems a bit sad. Yes. <laughs> Could you imagine? I'd like to be that, that, uh, that weird guy in a barrel in Sekiro. Yeah, I'd like to be the person driving this car. Imagine how much money I'd have. Oh, if I had that. That's literally my favourite car. <laughs> um, okay, so yes. Uh, Playground Games, developers of Forza Horizon, um, released this stream this morning. It's it's episode four of Let's Go. Um, and Let's Go. It's got, Let's name. Go Pikachu. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, it's got friggin' gameplay of Forza Horizon 5, and it looks excellent. I mean, it's it's streamed, and then it's streamed into this, so it probably just looks like a blur. Um, yep. But, man, does this game look special or what? There are uh, 11 biomes. Um, I'm just going to go over so to nice. Season Gaming. Um, just, you know, using my, my very trusted source of SeasonGaming.com. Go over there if you want the best gaming website and guess what no ads because ainsley is a fucking legend and it's such a relief to go to a gaming website and it not be filled with ads yeah like, i mean every so- website's filled with ads these days so it's hard to escape it is except seasongaming.com. gaming.com yeah except <laughs> the one and only season um so i'm just gonna put this link in the chat as well if anyone wants to check out the high-res photos so, so we have the canyon which is what we saw in the trailer. Uh, we saw, well, one of the biomes we saw in the trailer, which is very pretty. It was the one where it's like, wait, that is that moving? And then it's like, oh, my God, it's gameplay. 
<laughs> this uh, is gameplay. <laughs> it's so pretty. The tropical coast, which is gorgeous. Uh, there's a really nice shot of a Show very me nice Get rid of these nerds. blue, green. Uh, let's go back. Nerds. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. They can stay on there the side. Go. They can That's stay nice. on the side. Uh, the tropical coast is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Then we got farmland, which looks like it's straight out of uh, um, number four. And we have the arid hills, which are like very almost Australian looking. Yeah. Um, brown grass and trees. Jungle. My favorite. So beautiful. I and love like, tropical coast and jungle. Like I just yeah, those, same. I love those areas. Yeah. Uh, the living desert, which is what we saw in the trailer as well, which is like an arid area but with lots of plant life. Yeah, the rocky coast, which looks cacti. like the uh, cacti. The rocky coast looks straight up like the Twelve Apostles from number three. The sandy desert, which is as you would imagine, and the swamp, which we also saw in the trailer, and it just like the trees look incredible. Uh, I highly recommend watching this stream and and listening to some of the cool stuff they say, like the amount of photogrammetry and stuff like that that they've had to do for this game is just like, whoa. And apparently, like, looks legitimately, like, the same as certain areas. Um, there's also the urban city of Guanajuato, I think it's called. Yeah, um, sounds good to me. Looks very pretty. And then the volcano as well. Volcano! Um, also in this uh, stream. Look how beautiful it looks. I thought it wasn't going to have seasons because they were, like, kind of talking about, um, like, I don't, I don't know. I think they were talking about the, the diverse areas. I didn't think they were going to have seasons like they did in, in four. Uh, and then they're like, boom, they show it in in the winter on the mountain and it's all snowy nice. and shit. And like, there's going to be way more rain in spring. And um, because, you know, Mexico is quite uh, equatorial, the yeah. seasons I don't think will be as big shifts, you know, because at the coast in Mexico season. in the winter, it, it ain't going to be snowing. So it's going to be no wet. Um, yeah. So I'm like, I'm so excited that I, d- I just thought it wasn't going to have seasons and I was okay with that. But now they're like, yeah, it's got seasons as well as 11 different biomes. Uh, fucking hell. It looks, it looks real nice. It looks so good. And like, they're really like, they're really showing it off. There's like a lot of gameplay here and they're like, it's funny. They're like hesitate to uh, go over to this area because it's a developer build, and I'm I'm like scared shitless essentially <laughs> that something's going to break. But it doesn't. And it goes all very sweetly. Uh, there's this really cool bit coming up where he jumps off the edge. Um, there we go. And it is just wild. Um, Kat, I know you're probably completely disinterested in this game. Whee! Um, but thanks Look, for no, I like humoring it, me. It's really hard in my heart because, like, it looks so nice, and I like mm. the cars. And you know what? I used to love Need for Speed. And I like on one hand, I'm like, I want to play this, but on the other hand, I can't get out of my head. Like, dude, you're just driving a car. Like, <laughs> you're just driving a car. Around. <laughs> what, are you, what are you? What are you doing? Like, I just, I don't uh, like. For me, I, I don't see like there's no interest in that bit for me but the game looks so lovely that i want to you know so um we'll see you know mm. that game pass baby that game exactly pass. right like you know, so... download it and just give it a go exactly but yeah that's that's funny actually because yeah as someone who's a big fan of of racing games it's funny to think that it is a bit of a niche genre even though like yeah. falls of horizon i mean I say niche, but like a lot of, I guess, casual gamers like racing games, but it's not like for everybody. That's for sure. No, I mean, yeah. no, what game is really, but yeah, it's, um, I guess it is. Yeah. It's funny to try and think like, oh yeah, it is just driving a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Just driving around. Uh, like I think Tash wants to kill me sometimes when I'm in like Forza obsession mode and I'm like, all I do is play Forza and just it's like just cars car revving <laughs> constantly and I'm like having the best time and it's just like must be just so, so much noise in the corners <laughs> <laughs> and you're like wow wow we oh my god 
Look, um, I love to watch video games as well, hmm. like just games that are like I would have no interest in playing. I love to watch, but like even I don't know if I could even watch it. Like I don't, I don't know. Like <laughs> it's like something in my head. It's so hard to just disengage it from. It's just driving. Like when you have Need for hmm. Speed, like. <laughs> It's street racing and freaking like police chasing and mm, all that. Yeah, like, yeah, I was yeah. that when I like when I was little. Um, yeah. But like Forza is just more like. Do I have track racing in it? I don't know. Uh, Horizon, they don't have like any race tracks. Well, they do in the Lego DLC, but yeah, you there's like street racing. Um, like there is illegal street racing, but no cops. And there's road racing. Yeah. Um, cross country, dirt, drift, drag. Yeah. yeah. So, like I, could, like, I could see me playing it for a little bit, but I think after I had experienced the, the race, like, I don't, is there a story that I'm going to experience, or do I just go from race to race? Like, there's, the- yeah, Horizon sort of has a story. Like, you're, you're essentially like expanding the festival, um, over time. But it's oh, not yeah, like... like you have to go down and find like the the Mayan or whatever it is. The um, yeah, yeah, it looks like the... That the trailer, like you're yeah. finding somewhere for the festival to go, and you're like, down here should be the ruins, blah blah blah. Yeah, mm. you know, because they didn't I might do play that in four, bit, and right. that's it. Like, because yeah. I think once yeah. I've raced the race and driven around the areas for a little bit, like I don't see ever returning to it. Yeah, there's these really cool. It looks beautiful. Uh, there's these really cool bits in Forza games. Oh, I can't showcases where you're like you're driving like a hypercar against a jet or against uh, a train or against yeah. a giant hovercraft or something like that. Where it's like, yeah, really crazy, um, like I think... showcase race, and they're they're kind of few yeah. and far between, but they're they're a fun thing. Yeah, I think if it was more fantastical like even though need for speed (laughs) isn't necessarily fantastical there's that that the cops and story element um that's a bit more like unbelievable that is the bit that gets me like i think if it was a game where i was like like as similar as it can be just like but space racing instead like I feel like I'd be all the fuck over that. Like I'm trying to win my space race Star bounty Wars or whatever. Episode yeah. one racer, yeah. Yeah, right. Pod racing, let's go. Like maybe I'd be more interested in that. I think it's so grounded in reality um, that maybe that's what makes it so hard to separate in my head. It's just driving. Mm-hmm. That's what I think about. It's just driving. <laughs> <laughs> but it does look so freaking beautiful. Like I can't, I cannot yes. say enough how absolutely gorgeous it looks. So maybe I'll play yeah. the story mode. Yeah. And yeah, see. make a festival race, festival thing. And then mm, that's right, because you can make stuff. This question's for you then. Before we wrap up wrap up tonight, mm. we got one from the one and only Laz. Uh have either of you played Disco Elysium looking to buy it as it's on sale on PSN? Yes. Yes, I have. It got gifted to me. The um what's the like the cult? No, what's this? The edition that came directors out recently, cut. the director's cut, yeah. Um, where they <laughs> the, added the Delectors Plus, the Delectors Plus, where they added all of the um, like voice lines and stuff, dude. Laz, that is a great game. We've talked about it previously on some of our podcasts, so you could probably trawl back and find some more info on it. Um, like it, the story is amazing, uh, the choices. Uh, and the dialogue is fantastic. Um, very rough in some cases. Like I'm a, I'm a, I've got a big fucking mouth, and I say some rough shit sometimes. But that game is <laughs> rough as hell. Like in some cases, like it is, woo, like whoa, shit. For me, uh, there's also like so much reading and listening like so yeah. much so much like of all the rpg get type games i've played like it's the most that i've seen however um you have mentioned the old school baldur's gate games and i think that if you like those then you will like it because um 
I feel the same way about the old school Baldur's Gate. <laughs> 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 so much reading. What am I doing? You know? Um, but like, even though it's not necessarily my type of game because of how uh, dialogue heavy it is, it is so, so good. I haven't finished it. Um, and I was playing on stream and hopefully I will get back to it. I think it's, it's been good to have a bit of a break because you don't necessarily lose too much as well when you're playing like the, there's not so much going on that you're constantly perplexed. Like they saw, they open it up very slowly to you. Um, but it is really, really good. So definitely give that a go. It's, it's so wacko. So wacko. I think. I I really wanted to come to to Xbox because I don't have another console at the moment. And it's on Mac, but I also don't want to get it on Mac. So I mean it would um, probably be run very fine on Mac. Also, you know oh, what I have fine. a problem I've got a with? Pretty decent Mac, but I, I have a problem with that game because it's exactly like Mina. Like I want to be a good person <laughs> and I'm a dickhead. Fuck you. I hate taking the bad options in games. Make me feel terrible. Mm. But this guy that you play as is a real, real fucking bottom of the barrel jerk who makes some real inappropriate comments and shit. And I'm just like, wow, I do not want to say that. I do not want to be this guy. Um, oh, no. Which is why apparently there's like, you you get these um like uh, classes kind of like the they'll label you, um, and I think one of the labels is a constant apologist. I think is is the label something similar to that and apparently the first time people play that game almost everybody gets that label um because <laughs> he's so horrid that you're always apologizing and trying to make up for it so everybody oh accidentally God. gets that label <laughs> so um That's definitely funny. like have fun because there's like you can absolutely go wild in that game it's wacko um and very cool very cool mm, very nice good oh thanks cat Thank you for your wealth of knowledge. Yeah. And Kat, you, tell us about tell us about what's happening over on twitch.tv forward slash cat cat this week. This week. Well, you know I'm playing video games. Um, we're not gonna play the last stop because we're done with that. Um, we're done. We're done with that. We finished it. Um, but a, a little little um there's you know a few um I can't fucking remember what I'm saying. There's, there's a few games that we'll be choosing from. There's Game Pass games. There's a million games that I paid for. Uh, I was going to say there's, like, yeah, there's Mass Effect that I haven't finished. You know what? I might because I don't know what the fuck Ooh. I'm doing. My good friend here, Direct Gaming, gave me a key last week and I didn't even end up having the time to play it. So eat shit me um really great <laughs> what the fuck ever uh, god is it, life is gets it over annoying. now that beta? yeah yesterday yes. fucking dog had to place bloody last stop instead huh that was <laughs> my fault i'm kidding <laughs> so was it was really like, good play last stop play last stop play last stop um play last stop play everything but uh yeah we look we'll play something We'll play mm. something on stream. We didn't even get to do um, Soul Sunday this previous week. Like, that's that's the type of week it's been. Um, but this Thank weekend, you. fucking fingers crossed, boyos, that we're going back to Dark Souls 2. So, um, you know, it smacked me with that wicked follow and a sub before you even watched a single stream sub. You've seen this. Yeah. You've seen this. Yeah, you've seen this. The comic stylings of Cat Jarrett. Yeah, you've seen the absolute shit that spews forth from my mouth. So go and hit sub and also follow me um, on Twitter, fucking at Cap Caddy, because I will sometimes tweet before I go live. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. It's sometimes. hard, man. It's hard. I like Dude, I, I get home from work, to... I fucking sit down, I'm like, I've got to play video games. <laughs> yeah. Scrambling to make a thumbnail and write a description and call Tash and like, oh my god, I was like, so many things I have to do. I made a new overlay and like just like yeah. rushing and to I, get everything done. And you're like, I, I gotta finish this game, and I'm like, sweet ass, like sweet ass, give me fucking thirty more minutes. I love that. Like, and I keep finishing um work later. Like, I just end up 
doing the closes or whatever. And then I got no mm. time in the afternoon. I got to fucking make dinner too. I got to eat. Oh my God. Mm. What is life? Why can't I just play video games all the time? This is ridiculous. I don't know. Who be if anyone, wants to, if anyone wants to sponsor us for, for life, we would love yeah. that. Was, yeah. Subscribe for life. Um, cost is uh, uh, one grand per week. Thank you. <laughs> Done. Sweet. Anyone <laughs> listening, please help us out. All right. Um, Thanks, Kat. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Appreciate you all in the comments. Appreciate everybody listening and watching after the fact as well. Uh, if you're watching the video version of this podcast, you can find the audio version in your ear holes uh, at anchor.fm slash controllers and coffee or search controllers and coffee on your favorite podcast platform. You can also give us a five-star rating or review on Apple Podcasts or your platform of choice. And go subscribe to youtube.com slash direct gaming as well. We would love the support. Follow the bloody Twitter as well at controllers pod. Follow me at yeah. direct gaming, cat at cat caddy. We will see you next Tuesday, same time. Thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Thank you, Cat, for joining me. Everybody so have welcome. a lovely day, evening. Have fun out there in Flight Simulator. Peace out, yo. Ciao. 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 Ciao.